Choo choo, motherfuckers! Everyone loves Snowpiercer, the 2013 film from Bong Joon-ho about a train that circumnavigated the globe after scientists freeze the planet solid. It was great. The insane premise worked as a movie because it was so propulsive that we never had a chance to focus on how ridiculous it was. And once we reached our final destination, we didn't even have to think about it anymore. It was perfect as a movie, so of course Hollywood decided to turn it into a 10 episode series because network execs get their rocks off by destroying the things we love. What are they gonna do next? Turn Parasite into a TV show? Oh, f We'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. For now, let's get back to Snowpiercer. TNT of all places is releasing a reimagining of Snowpiercer, so you must be asking yourself, what are the differences between the TV show and the movie? As the only person you can trust on the internet, I jumped on the grenade and rewatched the movie, and then watched all 10 episodes of the show to see how they're different. And boy, are they different. First things first, TNT Snowpiercer still takes place on a train, so they got that part right. And the world still looks like the inside of your freezer, minus that nine-tenths empty pint of haagen -Dazs from five years ago. But the first big change you'll notice is when the show takes place. In the movie, we catch up with Captain America on board the train 17 years after Snowpiercer departed. That means that preschoolers who boarded Snowpiercer were of legal drinking age when the movie started. Throw one back for the apocalypse. In the series, we catch up with Layton, who is the show's version of Curtis, less than seven years after departure, meaning preschoolers who boarded Snowpiercer are barely going through puberty. The shorter time frame shapes a lot of character relationships because many of them are still carrying baggage from their time before the train. That has a big impact on Layton who juggles relationships he had before the big freeze and those he made in his time on the train. But otherwise, the changed time frame doesn't seem to have that big of an impact on the story. Next up, who's behind all this madness? In the film, Snowpiercer was created by some Looney Tunes visionary named Wilford who sits up in the engine room, anonymously lording over the delicate ecosystem of the train. You remember him. He was played by Ed Harris, and Chris Evans eventually met him in the final act of the film. There's a twist on Wilford in the show that I can't go into without spoiling the first episode, but let's just say it's a staggering change from the movie, and it dictates a huge storyline that runs throughout the entire first season. Still, it's far from the biggest change that the show will be throwing at you, which we're gonna talk about right now. Are you sitting down? Have you swallowed whatever you're eating or drinking so it doesn't spray all over your phone or keyboard or yourself? Good. Because Snowpiercer the TV show is... A murder mystery. Yes, a murder mystery. Well, to be fair, the first half of the season is a murder mystery. The idea that drives the film is that the lower class citizens at the back of the train are attempting a revolution against the rich posh folk at the front of the train. And the entire movie follows Captain America's progression as he and his army of dirty slummers make their way up train. It's the heart of Snowpiercer's theme of classism and social inequality. In the show, revolution is still on the minds of the lower class, called the Tailies. Shout out to Lost! But before Layton can do that, he's called on by the cops to help solve a murder on the train. Why? Because he is the only homicide detective left alive in the world. I get it, it's a TV show. TNT needed to figure out a way to stretch the film into a television series. But did they have to take the most hackneyed route there? Because they did. It's like going from El Paso to Montreal via Miami in Ticket to Ride. This obviously changes the entire feel of the show as Layton is working with those in charge of the train instead of hacking through them like Chris Evans did in the movie. The good news is that Snowpiercer normalizes in the second half when it begins to look a lot more like the film. Well, mostly. Because the show never really has the feel of the movie because of one obvious factor. Bong Joon-ho really isn't involved in the series. I don't think Snowpiercer the movie would have ever worked without the master touch of Bong Joon-ho. His sense of controlled insanity held my interest when the story started falling apart, and the way he shot the action scenes and pushed the actors to take their performances to the next level was magnificent. In the show, there's no one like Tilda Swinton's Minister Mason, there's no one like Song Kang hos Min Su, there's not even anyone like Alison Pill's teacher. TNT Snowpiercer is dulled around the edges. Much like other TNT shows like The Last Ship and Falling Skies. F*** you, Falling Skies. Bong Joon-ho's name may be in the credits as an executive producer, but his creative energy is nowhere to be found. 
finally, Snowpiercer the movie had a clear, satisfying ending that left its audience with something to think about. But this is a TV show, and TNT would love nothing more than for Snowpiercer to become the bonanza of sci-fi apocalypse shows. So by the time the finale rolls around, it really just feels like the beginning of what's next. The finality of the film closed the curtain on a wild ride, with no need for a sequel. There was a polar bear! Take that hope and imagine the rest for yourself. However, TV, like Snowpiercer, aims to be perpetual. And TNT has already greenlit the second season. However, the last three episodes are the best part of the season by far, and the finale's twist to keep the series going is some insane that might even get me to watch season two. If you're looking for a 10 hour version of the Snowpiercer film, your best bet is to watch the movie five times in a row, because TNT Snowpiercer goes way off the tracks laid by Bong Joon-ho's film. But you'll probably watch it anyway. Do any of these changes from the movie sound good to you? Do they make you want to watch the show? Or throw your TV from the train? Let us know in the comments below.